it's a very pretty day down here on the bayou at least it is for now there's a storm coming in in a couple hours or at least rain i don't know if it's a storm and i have been dying some gear that was uh that universal camo pattern and also some coyote this stuff here was coyote and i dyed it with some writ dye and i'm pretty happy with the results and this of course was that ugly sage and um this was also sage and it did okay um so just getting some dyeing in but that is not what this video is about this is what this video is about this is a terrain model kit i did a video on this about seven years ago and if you look it up it's called a sand table because when i was in the marine corps i don't remember hearing it called a terrain model kit we called it a sand table kit um but evidently that is the term for it um and uh i just want to make sure I, I correct that because if you go you know googling or searching for it i want to make sure that you can find it so when i was in the marine corps we carried our terrain model kits and crown royal bags i'm not sure what the import of crown royal bags were but they were a big deal in the marine corps at least when i was in uh, everybody had one and you either carried your your little train model kit some people carried their their uh, uh shaving kit in it but everybody carried a, a, a crown royal bag i don't i don't know what it was all about there there's nothing great about them it was just a thing anyway it's it's kind of a uh memory for me and 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 so so that's what i do but this is a terrain model kit that i've built so that i can give a little class i actually gave away my last one uh, in one of my contests so i didn't i didn't have one i went for a long time without one and i just decided one day that i wanted to go ahead and build a couple and have them ready and my last one i used some cheap little dollar general army men and I was very unhappy with them. And so I looked online and found out that they still make, in America, real army men. The, the, the kind that, that I grew up with and maybe you grew up with too. And um, I was really happy to find them. They weren't that expensive either. I think I got 100 for for, I don't know, five, six bucks. And um, the reason you want to get those is because you want to pick out the right guys out of your out of your army men and then the rest of them you can give to a thrift store or give to your grandkids or or play with them yourself but you you just want certain army men and this terrain model kit is built really not so much for the active duty military this is more an shtf you know minuteman citizen soldier the the chinese have attack the U.S. and we're fighting on the interstates kind of uh, train model kit, you know, fun stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through it and show you what I've got. And the big rule about train model kits is there are no rules. You can, you can come up with whatever you want. Very often in the Marine Corps, uh, these little uh, uh, place placeholders would be made out of uh, uh, MRE, uh, um, matches or emery ship paper or something like that but the more i used one and when i was an instructor at the school of infantry it was a big deal to have uh the the proper kind of of signal or not signal but um uh um, signs for for different things and i didn't do that so much here because like i said this is not made for the military uh for instance when I was in, we would put uh, ORP for objective rally point maybe on this one here. But since that's not something that's in the, the common vernacular of a citizen, uh, I just put rally. Because if you tell somebody this is our rally point, this this place here is where we're going to meet up, folks know what rally means. And so it's a little more clear than ORP or objective rally point. I don't have to get that into the weeds with the militaristic uh, uh, speech. And the uh, acronyms just call it a rally point and um, so like I said I'm not saying it's dumbed down it is it is made to fit the audience all right so let's look at it first of all we talked about the crown royal bag um, it really it won't work unless you have a crown royal bag so you got to make sure you you get one of those and the next thing is the army men themselves and whereas in the military we would set them up for a squad 
Uh, so we would have like, you know, uh, four man fire teams making up a, a, a 12 man squad. You know, we'd have the, the radio man, maybe we'd have the uh, machine guns. If you had, um, uh, a couple patrol leaders, you know, a, an assistant patrol leader, whatever. But, um, we'd had set up for, for that kind of thing here. I've put enough guys in to be, you know, fluid, but probably you're not going to be using all these guys. I mean, maybe you're going to have somebody with a radio or some sort of comm. I doubt that you're going to have machine guns, but you may have a designated marksman that you want to give that to. But mostly you're just going to have these guys, you know, just some guys. And the reason I picked the laying down guys isn't just because if you're in an ambush, you're probably going to be laying down, but because you don't have to worry about standing them up. When you're going through this, uh, you're probably not going to be on a nice table like this. You can probably be in the, the dirt. And it's just easier just to lay them down in the dirt and say, well, this, these are these guys. So that's why I've picked those particular guys out of the Army Man set. The next thing is going to be the uh, cord. Now, when I was in, we didn't have colored paracord. I mean, we were lucky to get green and black. So nowadays... You can go to the Joann's or the Michael's or even some, some hardware stores and get all kinds of colors of paracord. In my day, we had to use yarn, and it was terrible because the yarn would pick up the, the leaves and the grass, and then after a while, they'd just get all messed up. Paracord is much better than yarn. So what you want to do is you want to get different colors of paracord to stand for different things. For instance, you probably want to use red to designate a danger area maybe a kill zone. Blue is first off going to be for water. And here I've got two different blues because I live in an area with a lot of water. So I may want to designate the light blue for streams or intermittent um, creeks and the dark blue for bios or bays or main rivers. Now, if you live in more of a desert area, you might want to go with just one blue because the waterways aren't that, that frequent or common. Yellow could be anything, um, you know, it could designate a danger. It could be whatever you decide yellow is going to stand for. And you don't have to use those colors exactly. Although I recommend that you stick to the blue and the red for the danger areas in the water. You can get all kind of colors and say whatever you want. Um, matter of fact, you don't even have to go to a Joann's or a Michael's. I think I got all of these colors. I think I got like um, 10 colors. Each one's a three foot long hank for less than 10 bucks off of Amazon. So those are easy to come by now, those, those colored paracords. And the next thing after the paracord is these little pieces of coroplast. Now coroplast is that corrugated plastic that uh, you see the road signs made of, the, the garage sale signs and stuff like that. And you don't have to go steal a road sign. You can buy this stuff at Home, Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere like that. But um, the reason I like them is because they're light, they're super light, they weigh nothing, and they're pretty much indestructible. If they get wet, nothing happens to them. And you can find white ones and yellow ones very easily. Now, what I've done here is I've let the white with the red marking designate the enemy actions or the enemy positions. And yellow has taken on either friendly or uh, just common things that are neither friendly nor enemy. So if I wanted to show my rally point, that's in yellow. If I want to show an enemy position or the enemy enemy uh, uh, direction uh, of travel, I, I use the white. And then the other thing, and I have to confess, I've never used these, but I saw somebody else was using them, is these golf tees. You can find these at a, a thrift store for next to nothing. And they're good because you stick them in the dirt and that can designate something. Um, I've thrown some in here because, once again, they weigh next to nothing. Uh, they, can, they can designate a route. They can, you can use them instead of some of these guys here to show a point where something's going to happen or where you expect to, uh, to encounter something. So it just gives you a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility to designate whatever you want. So let's go ahead and set something up and just kind of run through a scenario. All right, for you to use a train model kit to show how the uh, team is going to operate at a specific place or through a certain area. You either have to have a map of that area or you have to have first-hand knowledge of the area so that you can explain it to, to your people. Now, 
this is a stroke of luck. I went to look for a map in the shed, and I actually found my map from when I was a, a tactics instructor at the School of Infantry. <laughs> and this thing is old as could be. Um, so you would take a map like this, and you would you would kind of recreate on the ground here um, the area that you're going to operate in. And then what you would do is you would brief your, your squad or your team uh, using both the map and the uh, terrain model to give them a really good idea of where you're going, what the place is going to look like, and what you're going to do when you get there. Okay? So what I've decided to do is I'm going to create a terrain model for an ambush in that area right there where that road comes down and where that road crosses that stream we're going to set up an ambush and so what I'll do is I'll recreate that area with my terrain model and be able to brief my guys alright so we're looking at the area that we're setting up the ambush right where that road comes down from the north and crosses that stream and there's you can see from the uh, the brown marks, which are contour, contour lines, uh, the, the terrain goes down quite a bit into a gully or a slough where that stream sits. So this is what I've recreated. And I want to go ahead and say right now, these army men that I bought, you can buy them in odd colors. And I wish now I had because you can barely see those green guys. I'm afraid I'm going to lose one. Um, I probably should have got purple or something like that. But anyway, so the first thing I do is I make sure that my map is oriented the same direction as my uh, train model. And I have the north placard there to indicate that. Now, yellow indicates the road coming down from the north. The blue indicates the stream. I've used these white golf tees to show my team's progress. I've designated a rally point. If anything goes wrong, or or even even uh, it doesn't have to be something going wrong, I can say, okay, after the ambush, we're going to rally here. Um, that's all going to be in your five paragraph order, which we're not going to really get into here. But I've designated the red twine or the red uh, paracord shows the direction and progress, or it shows the trail of the enemy, and the little placards with the red arrows show the progress direction. And what I've done is I've set up my guys. I hope you can see this. I've got one guy here on the flank, and he's actually going to be watching the enemy, making sure that they're not going to have flank guards coming around us. And he's going to be the first one to know that the enemy's coming. I may have some sort of communication system set up, and if so, I'd tell him right now. It may just be a string that he pulls. It may be a radio where he clicks. Um, you know, that, that could be any scenario. Then I've got my, and I've only got a four-man team in this scenario. Then I've got my three men set up for the actual ambush. I've got two of the flat guys and the one guy with the rifle. Today I'm using the guy with the rifle and uh, up to his uh, eye to designate the team leader, to designate myself. So I've shown how we come in. I've shown where we set up. And then this X shows where we're going to initiate the ambush. When the enemy gets right there, just before the stream, and let's say that's a, either a, a water crossing or maybe it's a bridge, whatever. Um, just before they get to the stream, we're going to initiate the ambush. And I'm not trying to get into the tactics of it, but the idea there is that this is a deep gully. And, you know, if they survive the initial uh, onslaught of the ambush, they're going to be down into the river. And if we want to, we can pursue, pursue them down into the water or, or not. But that's the reason for the ambush there. After the ambush, we are going to be coming back on our trail. There's the rally point there, showing our way back. So it's that simple. I mean, there's not much to it. That is a very, very basic terrain model kit. And that's the very basic way that you would use it if you wanted to, to uh, instruct your team on where you're going, what it's going to look like when you get there, and the actions of each man once they get there. Brent0331 has a couple of outstanding videos on using train model kits, and I recommend that you watch every single thing that this guy puts out, because he is a smart man. But uh, I just wanted to make this video, 
thanks for watching.